Hey, this is Coach Boyson, and in this screencast, we're going to be talking about viral replication. It sounds like what it is. It's how viruses replicate. Because they are non-living, they can't do it on their own. And we talked about in a previous screencast just the basic structure of a virus and how it causes disease. So let's look at how they actually infect a host cell, reproduce, and then continue on, even though they're a non-living thing. Well, if you're looking at my little uh, virus here as an acute, um, obviously replication would be this idea that that virus is going to replicate over and over. And so if a virus is to replicate, it has to spread from host to host. So it has to be able to spread into a cell, a living cell, invade that cell, take it over, and then be able to reproduce. And it's going to kill the cell in the process. And so obviously the number one way that things get passed is through some type of sneeze or a cough on a hands that wash. And so viruses can enter the body through any opening in our body. And obviously this guy blowing stuff at me here, uh, not very fun. That's what a sneeze must look like. I've never seen one in slow motion, but... Um, I don't know. He may be overemphasizing the spit there. But uh, so let's get started with this. Um, if you're looking at a cell, this obviously is much different than what we just looked at in the previous screencast on the structure of a virus. And um, we have all these working organelles and parts. And so there's two main, what I'm going to call factories in this analogy, that viruses have to overtake or hijack to be able to reproduce. Why is that only two? Because there's only two parts to a virus. There's a DNA or RNA, so there's a genetic material and it's surrounded by a protein coat. And so here's the first one that we have to uh, overtake as a virus. A virus has to overtake the gene factory. Yeah, there's actually a place called the gene factory. Um, the gene factory is actually going to be right here in the nucleus. All right, that's where DNA gets copied. And so what's the process I'm talking about here? I'm talking about DNA replication. This process or mechanism inside the cell that replicates DNA the virus needs to hijack that because that virus needs to be able to replicate its viral genetic material, whether it be viral DNA or even RNA. And so to do that, it has to take over the gene factory. If we look down here to the left, the other factory that's going to have to overtake is what I'm going to call the coat factory. We said last time that viruses have a protein coat, and so it has to take over that coat factory. And here's the process I'm talking about. It's the protein synthesis process. It's this process of transcription, DNA, transcribed to messenger RNA, and then that messenger RNA coming out here to a ribosome where we're going to get, and so this is going to happen right here at the side of a ribosome. Um, the ribosome is going to translate that messenger RNA into new protein coat. And so these two factories, if we look at both of them, have to be hijacked and taken over. And that's what the virus is trying to do. It wants to attach to the cell, invade, drop off its genetic material, hijack these two processes so it can make new viral genes, new protein coats, reassemble them, and then it's going to destroy the cell in the process. And so let's look at the first cycle that we have here for a virus. The first one we have here, it's actually called the lytic cycle. Um, it comes from the word lysis. Lysis means to break open. And so at the end of this cycle, the cell is going to burst and release new virus, and it's going to die in the process. And so if you're looking up here in the top left, um, I have my virus here. So the blue represents the protein coat. This little strand of DNA represents the DNA. And so what we're looking at here is a DNA virus. So this is a virus that contains DNA on the inside, not RNA. So what has to happen for this lytic cycle to happen is that virus needs to be able to attach to that cell. We talked about in the last screencast, those glycoproteins have to match up to those receptor proteins, and then that cell is going to invite that in. So attachment has to occur. The next thing is that as it enters, it's going to shed that protein coat. It doesn't need it anymore. That protein coat has done its job. And those viral DNA is going to go take over the mechanism, our first factory. It's going to take over that gene factory. It's going to start replicating viral DNA instead of the DNA that this cell normally would replicate. And so that viral DNA is going to have, be replicated. We're going to have multiple viral DNAs. And then now it's going to move on to the second factory, which is our uh, coat factory to make new coats, which is protein synthesis. So what's the first step? That DNA needs to be transcribed. So our little red squiggly lines here represent messenger RNA that's come off of that DNA. That messenger RNA has to go out to a ribosome where it will meet up and obviously that ribosome will translate that into new protein coat. The DNA of our viruses will match back up and reassemble with that protein coat and these new assembled viruses are going to lysis or break out of the cell. And so they're going to make little breaks along there as they exit the cell and it's going to end up bursting this cell in the process, 
killing the cell. And so we call this the lytic cycle. This is the cycle of a virus attaching, invading, taking over those two factories we talked about that the cell does. And why does it have to take over those factories? Because it by itself cannot do those things. It has to use these processes of the living cell to be able to reproduce because that virus is not alive. And so look at another type of cell. So RNA viruses are a little different. And so if you're looking here, you'll notice we have a little piece of RNA here. That's my little red squiggly line. We also have this little black dot here, and that represents an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Um, if you remember, transcriptions when you take DNA and you transcribe it over to messenger RNA. Well, if this is called reverse transcriptase, all right, reverse transcription, it's working in the opposite direction. So we're going to take this RNA and we're going to transcribe it over to DNA. So this enzyme helps that work in, in an opposite fashion. So this virus, much like the other one, needs to attach to the specific type of cell. It's going to release and inject that RNA as well as that reverse transcriptase. And then that reverse transcriptase is going to do transcription in reverse and convert that over to a DNA strand. That DNA is going to enter the cell and then the process we just talked about is now going to start. It's going to replicate that DNA. It's going to start making new protein coat, reassembling those new viruses to exit and again to destroy the cell in the process. And so an example of this is actually HIV. HIV is a RNA virus and so if you're looking down here you'll notice we have our glycoproteins on the outside which allow that HIV virus to attach to the T cells in our immune system and if you look on the inside we have our RNA here and then we also have our reverse transcriptase which is this little red dot here that enzyme that's going to do transcription in reverse for this virus and so RNA viruses, they actually call them retroviruses, like a throwback, right? Retro, because they work in reverse as opposed to the normal fashion of a DNA converting to a messenger RNA. They take a messenger RNA and they work transcription in reverse to make a DNA. And so uh, RNA viruses, though, what's really crazy about them is they can mutate like crazy. It makes it really hard to create a vaccine that would, that would treat uh, an RNA virus because they're always mutating and changing. And so that brings me to my last time. So that was the lytic cycle. Lytic cycle comes from that word lysis. It means it's going to bust, bust out. And so um, it's going to kill the cell in the process. The next type of cycle that viruses can fall into is what we call a lysogenic cycle. So it's a little different. So if you're looking at this, both of the cycles are shown in this picture. So we have the lytic cycle here. And this is what we talked about. So if we come here to part one, the virus, and this is a bacteriophage, is going to attach, release its viral DNA. Um, it's then going to begin reproducing that viral DNA and, and protein coat. It's going to reassemble those as we work to the top. And then once they're reassembled, they're going to lysis and break out right here, causing uh, the death of that cell. But if you come down here to the bottom, we have what we call the lysogenic cycle. And this cycle is a little different. The example I like to use for this is herpes, uh, the type of herpes that gives you the cold sores here on your mouth. Um, this type of virus has the ability that once that is injected, all right, so once that DNA or RNA is injected, it has the ability to merge with the genome there of that particular cell. In this case, this is a bacteria cell. And so as this cell goes through this process here of replication, you can see it's just replicating itself by binary fission asexually to where now we have one and two cells now, you'll notice that the virus also replicated, but you'll notice it didn't kill the cell in the process. And so the lysogenic cycle is this cycle of the viral DNA integrating with the cell's DNA, and as those cells replicate, that virus is also in the new cells that have replicated from it, but it's kind of like it's sitting and hiding. And every now and then, um, just like somebody that gets cold sores, there might be a stress, something like that. It causes these cells to kick into that lytic cycle, and then that lytic cycle obviously is going to start destroying those cells, and that's when you have those bumps show up with that disease. And so many times with a, a disease like herpes uh, that would cause the cold sores, you don't ever get rid of that virus. You always have it. It's laying and hiding in that lysogenic cycle. And then sometimes a stress kicks it into that lytic cycle where then it starts going through that process of reassembling new virus, busting out, killing the cell in the process, and you get those inflammations or cold sores on the mouth. So again, that was just the different cycles of how a virus can invade, take over a cell, 
it has takes over those two mechanisms. Remember, there's the gene factory, the factory of replicating genes, DNA or RNA, and then there's the factory of producing proteins to produce new protein codes. It has to take over those two processes to be able to reproduce because by itself it doesn't have the mechanisms to do that. So I'm Coach Boyce, and hopefully that was helpful. You guys have a good day.